In this video, I will be explaining how to use pagination in GraphQL APIs. Because pagination for GraphQL APIs is often not really understood by people. I'm not really sure why, because pagination is a bit different. In GraphQL, we're using cursor-based pagination, which is quite different from pagination based on page numbers or the outset, which you often see in REST APIs. Let me show you a code example by going to a graphical interface. In here, I've set up a GraphQL API using StepSend that is using cursor-based pagination. For example, we have a query that's called getPosts. So this one, which takes a parameter which is first. So first would mean the first set of results that you want to be want to see returned. And in there, instead of directly getting the results, so our posts have the fields like an ID, title, description, uh, and more. Instead of getting the post directly, we need to understand the concept of using edges and nodes. So in GraphQL world, edges are part of the connection string. So whenever you try to get the information here, we have to type edges. So edges will be the uh, array of results and the results will be in a node. So node is actually the result that you will be seeing on your screen. A node will then have all the fields that post have, like ID and title. So the concept of edges and node is quite important in GraphQL, especially when you're using uh, something like Relay to handle your data fetching on the front end side. So this all determines on a connection string. So I can go here, if I would go to the post query, you can see we have a post connection, which is then existing of edges, which is an array of the different uh, nodes. This will be post, will be the node here, and then we also have a cursor. Uh, and we also have a field called page object. But first, let me get this data. So this will return the first five uh, first five posts from the GraphQL API, uh, including its ID and its title. And then what's interesting here is next to the edges, uh, we can also get the page info object. So in here we can do page info, where we can get other fields like the end cursor has next page, has previous page, and the start cursor. So we could try to get the end cursor and see if it has a next page, because this is typically what you want to know whenever you're using this inside your front-end application. And here we can see we have page info, we have an end cursor. So why is the end cursor important? It's important because I can copy this and then I can use it in here as a parameter to find the next five results after the current results. Let me start with this. Let me prettify this a bit so it's more readable. So these are our fi first five results, so our first five nodes. Um, you can see ID here is five. If we do after this end cursor, so the end cursor will be the last one, so this in this scenario, you can see we're going to be getting the next set of results, so six to 10. And then there's an end cursor as well. Something else we can do besides getting nodes, we can also get the cursor here, which will make it a bit more readable for us and understandable where the data is coming from. So you can see the cursors will be empty except for the final one, which is also our end cursor. So this is how pagination typically works in GraphQL APIs where you're applying cursor-based pagination. And as I mentioned to you before, this will be uh, requiring you to understand the concept of edges and nodes, where edges is an array of results, uh, meaning nodes. So edges will contain nodes, and nodes will be the type that you are uh, usually will be expecting as a result. And I can show you what it looks like if we go to VS Code Project. So in here you can find a graphicalized API. So it's a REST API that's being graphicalized using StepSend. And as you can see, it's the JSON placeholder API, um, which also supports pagination, but it's page-based pagination, meaning that if I would copy paste this, I can actually also use a page number and the limit instead. What I've done, I've added this pagination field, meaning that I'm going to be using the already existing pagination-based um, pagination that has been supported by the REST API, and then I'm going to be transforming this into cursor-based pagination using StepSend. I can only do this by using this page field, uh, this pagination field. So that's the only thing I need to do to apply cursor-based pagination to a REST API that already supports page number-based pagination.
And then of course I need to set the uh, return type to not to be a post or an array of posts, but a post connection instead. So this would have page info and the page info op type is actually already generated for you uh, by Stepsen. So you don't have to define this yourself as it's quite of a standard in GraphQL. It will have the end cursor, the start cursor and information about the next or previous page. And then you can see your edges, which is well post edge here. So this is an array uh, of the type post edge that includes the nodes. So it's the type post and then also the cursor, which is string. And if you remember correctly, the cursor was the thing we were using to determine which page we were on. So to set up cursor-based pagination for a GraphQL API, the only thing you need to do with Stepsen is using this pagination uh, field object. So I hope you liked this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll be updated when the next video drops.